doing today. Um, I'll show you guys. Because now we can get out of the car. And we can talk about exactly why. Okay. Last video, we took, we took care of all this. That was pretty easy, to be honest. Now that I thought of, now that I think of it, it wasn't that hard. It just took time. But <clears throat> I do want to give you guys an update on this can and um, uh, the filter. When I went about the kit for the um, for the cleaning, I didn't realize that the uh, I didn't realize that the uh, the oil it comes in a in a squirrel squirt bottle kind of like um in fact i still have a bottle right here yeah let me go ahead and open it this right here see and the thing is this i'm used to using the um the aerosol can makes it a lot better it sprays an even coat rather than pretty much this as you guys can see watch see that doesn't really work the reason why is because once i cleaned it and once I um, once I allowed it to dry, let me get a napkin. Uh, <clears throat> and I and I start um, um, uh, putting the oil in it. Um, it took a minute for the oil to actually uh, actually start to uh, let's say sink in within the uh, the cotton on the filter. And um, I was thinking that that wasn't enough because when I poured it, it just it really it really took. A long time for the uh, for the card for the cotton or the filters to start sucking the uh, the oil. So what ended up happening? Uh, put too much, and by doing that, uh, I found out through the bottom that if I just do this with a napkin, see that? Um, my assumption is this: most likely, some of it um, oil and got on the master flow sensor, and most likely it killed it. The reason why because when I start the engine, in fact, I'll show you guys this. Let me start the engine. <clears throat> what? Oops, a little too close. It starts, can you see that? Can you guys hear that? Look at the RPMs. And the other thing is this, after I did that, after putting everything back together, um, I wanna say within the, I don't know, 10, 15 miles, um, this started happening. If I press a brake, see that? That's me pressing the brake pedal. Now, if if I press the uh, the accelerator, it works fine. And in fact, driving it, it driving it, it doesn't really, really feel that much of a different um, um, as far as the way it takes off. So if I press the brake and then I press the accelerator, see, it doesn't al allow me to rev it. And I'm actually pressing the brake. Watch this. See, but if I let go of the, of the brake pedal, if I press the brake, nothing. So what does that do? Let me turn it off now. So I did a little bit of research, and I come to find out that um, it has to do with the uh, with the master of flow sensor that um, um uh, most likely it just quit, it died, and it needs to be replaced. And a little bit more that I read about it, it kind of just got, it kind of just made me think most likely is the uh, the mass airflow sensor the other uh, cost of it and um since it's already um, i don't want to say an old car but to be honest that is the original mass so let's, let's go outside again <laughs> this is the original mass airflow sensor so um before it actually before it finally took it took a dump on me um through all the time that I owned the car, every so often it would throw me a code that it was a master of flow sensor, and the one and the way I got away with it pretty much, and most of the time I'm pretty sure everyone uh, would um, would uh, would know what I'm talking about is just cleaning it. I would just and then I always have one handy, um, the uh, the CRC master of flow sensor, and I always cleaned it, and then um, um, and then and then it worked. But I knew that I'm, I'm, I'm at a given moment. Um, it was gonna happen and it seems like it did um, my assumption is the uh, the fact that the the oil got on the uh, the cannon oil got on the uh, well, most likely on the on the on the, uh, on the sensor sorry I'm putting this up I'm putting this back <laughs> it kind of came off they killed it the oil, in short words the oil killed my master flow sensor finally but it's original and to be honest I really can't complain because I know I won't give a moment I was gonna do that 
Um, but that's that. Uh, I hope I didn't talk about it too much. But the thing that we're actually going to do today, it's a little different. Um, I ended up actually... Um, um, okay, let me move on. It's, we seem to have um, a leak on the valve cover gas on the valve cover itself gasket and it seems to be leaking from this bolt right here I know you guys can see it I'm pretty sure you guys can um, and the reason is this uh, I replaced the other valve cover gasket the day I replaced it and it was about 11 months ago how do I know that because of the fact that I went through the uh, uh, on my eBay on my eBay uh, when that I ordered when I ordered it and I was able to see when was the date I ordered the gasket and Apparently it was 11 months ago, so I know I'm pretty sure I can reuse it and that's what I'm going to do, but the thing that I'm going to do See if I can fix the problem. It's um, <clears throat> Using some permitted gasket and I'm not saying actually doing a whole beat but I know that I did not do this to this one, and I know that you're, to the extent you're supposed to, to, to the majority of the uh, of the vehicles, of the engines, it's right on the uh, on the hard edges. Um, we'll see when once we get to it. On right on the hard edges, um, it's recommendable to put it just a little bit, because it's like apparently that's where it seems to leak. And I think I kind of remember there was hard, kind of an edge. Um, right there and um, I thought about it when I was one of like I hope it doesn't leak and uh, apparently it is and we're probably gonna give it a good cleanup to the, uh, to the head and to the valve cover um, make sure it actually sees properly we're gonna clean the, uh, the gasket as well we're gonna let it dry and uh, hopefully we get better luck this time <laughs> the uh, the procedures of how I actually take it so first I'm pretty sure you guys saw already uh, I ended up taking the uh, the coils first and I took them individually and I knew from I put them from from left to right and another the left one is gonna be the first one and it's gonna be two three four five six it's two three four five and six of course and after that after taking the uh, the coils and put them um, um, in a regular order in a way you can in a, in a way you can remember so you can put it back in the way you remove them um, I took the um, the uh, the two bolts. I think these two, yeah, the two bolts that holds the um, um, what was it? This one or this one holds the um, the ignition coil wire wiring harnessed, and then I removed the uh, the bolt, the nut that the that actually attaches the uh, the lead, the main, to the starter. And all I did is pretty much just um, uh, flip it this way. And now we have pretty much yeah, the valve cover almost clean. Yeah, most likely I'm going to go ahead and um, take these things off. This is the, uh, the oxygen sensors um, connectors, leads, and I'm going to throw them this way. So pretty much just clear out the whole, um, the whole um, area so that I can start taking the bolts out. And then uh, we can proceed with the, uh, with the cleaning and try to fix the problem. <laughs>
forgot to take this dinner one. <laughs> As you get, I don't know if you guys can see it, but hear that? I can take it off. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this thing off now. Let's see. Oh. Remove the gasket because we're gonna work on that. Now slowly take this thing off. And carefully because we want to reuse this. So I'm gonna be having this in cover. I don't want any uh, debris to actually get in there, especially the camps. But before I cover, how many of you guys want to take a look in, in here? Uh, let's see. So that's pretty much the uh, the head. And if we examine the where could that leak be from, we'll have to guess. Actually, it might be the whole bottom part. Yeah, let me see. Oh, man. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and cover this with a towel. And I know some people might be like, they might leave some procedure on it, but at least try to get one that doesn't have that much lint. And that should be fine. Make sure it's nicely covered, nothing goes in there. While you clean the valve cover, the valve cover, which that's what I'm gonna do. So I just came back from the uh, from the store. I ended up going to O'Reilly's because um, I ended up deciding to rather than just use um, brake cleaner, I'm actually gonna use some engine degreaser. The reason why is because of the fact that I'm I'm seeing a lot of uh, not a lot of it, but just enough uh, some spots where it actually has gunk and uh, this is actually the foam type um, hopefully we get so foamy and just start losing things up and ended up getting another two more cans of brake clean um, that should be fine so let's go ahead and uh, spray this thing <laughs> that seems like it's a lot, but I don't think it is. So well, we actually allowed the uh, the valve cover gasket to let soak in into the uh, with the um, engine degreaser. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just go ahead and clean the valve cover gasket, just so I'll make sure that when I put everything back together, you're just gonna go ahead and seal. We're just gonna go ahead and go around it. Oh, it looks like I actually did ended up using a little bit of RTV, but maybe that was not enough. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and scrape that off, clean it and uh, stop putting everything back together because the more you have it open the possibilities of getting stuff in there are going to be higher so um, let me go ahead and do it seems like I'm actually going to be done I'm about to put the, uh, the belt cover back on the uh, back on the uh, on the head I already um, put the gasket on if you guys can see around it and I put some of the silicone right on those um, corners edges even right here, I should have recorded, but it's already on there. I'm actually uh, anxious to put it back on because I don't want to leave it open for so long. I just put the valve cover back on. Um, I was doing a little bit of research as far as the um, the torque and the pattern of it. Uh, um, not apparently, I kind of knew. I just want to verify it. It's always recommendable to start from the inside out, kind of like in an X. So let's say I started, I started right here. Then I went like th on the one on the bottom, and then right here, and then I went to this one, and this one, and that one, and then from here I jumped to the middle one over here, then the bottom one, and then this one, and then I went back to the middle one, bottom, top, and then front, which is middle, bottom, and top. I first ended up tying it just pretty much hand tight and then it's supposed to be about seven pounds I think now I'm gonna go ahead and put everything back together and let's go for it we are done I mean as far as the uh, the hardest thing to do all I have to do is just go ahead and put the uh, the cabin filter assembly that goes right there whoever has an E46 is familiar with it um, I already connected the uh, the, uh, the battery cable um, 
for the starter, the positive. I already connected the uh, the harness for the uh, uh, ignition coils, the leads as well, and the uh, the grounds. I bolted it on already. Seems to be pretty tight. Uh, the coils are pretty tight in there as well. Hopefully, it doesn't leak anymore again. Other than that, I'm gonna have to take this thing again and most likely just buy another gasket. So let's go ahead and start it and see um, if we can notice any visible um, leaks. Okay. Let it run. Oh, the other thing that I've noticed, I'm not sure you guys are gonna be able to see it, but way down there uh, somewhere in there where the motor mounts are I can see that they're starting to fall apart no wonder this has a little bit of shake now and it's starting to get a bit I don't when I mean worse I don't mean like oh my god the engine is gonna fall apart no it's just getting a little by little worse and uh, that's gonna be another video as well I uh, hope oh, hopefully they make a good video of it and uh, Hopefully you guys actually liked it as well. If you didn't like it, then like I said, my apologies. Um, I'll try to get better. And that's all it is. And thank you very much for watching. And until next time.